How's it going, everybody? This is Derek Quick of Financial Fortune. Today, I'm going to be talking about the stock UEX Corp, ticker symbol UEXCF. This is one of the most bullish stocks I have ever been bullish on. And this stock has a wonderful chart, some amazing upcoming catalyst. It is a uranium stock. And we'll just look at the chart right here. I, I'm usually a fundamental type trader, but technicals is a, just a, always a part of my trading. I always like to look at the charts. Uh, this is the year chart here, and it's on the weekly. If we look at UEXCF, it's my favorite chart, one of the most bullish charts out there. It's a parabolic curve here. And this looks phenomenal because not only do we have the confirmation here, we're getting a lot more buying, buying volume, some of the most we, this stock has ever had. But we're setting up for this final, this final takeoff, which will coincide with the company on the 18th. We're going to talk about in a little bit, 18th of June, they're going to be buying JCU's assets, which will make the company double their uranium uh, reserve. And the location of these reserves is the best in the world. It's in the Athabasca Basin, and this is the highest grade uranium in the world. So I really do like this. Um, I really, really like the chart. It's uh, it's looking phenomenal. I think we're going to have a breakout here really soon. Uh, there are a bunch of analysts, uh, Bloomberg, a bunch of them confirm with me as well, basically, that this stock should double. Uh, we're, we'll just talk about it from the basics here. So UEX, uh, they've got six of the next 10 uranium development projects in Canada. Like I said, the best location for uranium assets. And on this chart, I really like it. It's very bullish. It shows you all of the biggest projects out there. And the grade is up here on this uh, scale. And then this is how many million pounds. So if you look, all of these are UEX. And... They have a percentage, if not all, uh, of some of these. Some of these are a percentage, meaning they have less overhead. They're still going to be able to profit, depending on the percentage they have. And then they also have three of the four Tier 2 projects that we see down here. So Kigavik, uh, the Shia Creek, and the Horseshoe Raven. So these are great projects. But the grade, obviously, of Phoenix, eventually when that gets put into uh, production and things are done with that, it's going to be a lot of money coming in for them as they own percentages of these tier one uh, projects, which is phenomenal. Uh, another thing is you can see this is the market capitalization per pounds of U308 combined. And with this JCU uh, deal that's about to happen, it'll be 91 cents. So it puts them pretty much for the grade number one. And they're just behind uh, GoVX. But we're talking about the best Canadian companies and the Canadian companies that I think will go from being these smaller junior you know, developers, uh, explorers, to possibly having some of the biggest minds in the future in the world. So you can't beat this. Uh, these two charts just super bullish for the company. And then with this, this uh, potential for growth, they say, no matter how you look at it. So say this JCU deal doesn't go through, which it's, it's going to go through. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, they still pretty much have all of the same assets that, that the deal has, but it's just a smaller percentage, which means they just take a different route. It means that they're not going to be the main owners of those properties or they have a less share so it's less responsibility so it kind of balances itself out but they will have as a junior they'll be the second most uh they'll have the most pretty much projects and land which is four hundred thirty-five thousand acres they'll have and if you look company like say next gen with the massive aero deposit another market's caps at 2.6 uh, billion right now. So right now it's one point, you know, 1.4, 1.5, uh, sorry, 150 million. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it has a really big upside to this and they literally will be getting double the amount of uranium with this deal. 
So it, it drops them to a very low cost, you know, price for their uranium, which uranium market is going now into a bull market. So I expect this summer when Sprott starts to squeeze the uranium spot price with the UPC type deal that's coming out. Uh, I think that you're going to start to see this valuation of, of UBX runs uh, exponentially. So they currently, I think, um, with just what they already have, like I said, on this side, I think they're an easily double to triple, you know, with uranium just running just a little bit. Uh, but right now, if you see all their assets right here, this is what they have already, what they'll be getting. It's it's a pretty good deal. This Canadian million, so about four hundred million. Uranium price is going to rise. You know, none of the no, pretty much no company can produce and you know get these things going without it starting. So, uh, major shareholder, ten, you know, nine point nine percent is Cameco, uh, former CEO, seven point four nine percent, Segar Capital, two percent, and uh, Global X and Sprott both have a uh, little under a percent. 1%, which will be growing, I think, when this deal goes out. Uh, so, you know, compared to their peers, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, these are some of the mines there, which are the best in the world, I told you. Uh, like this, the, the Shia Creek, it, it looks like literally a seven. This is, this is about how deep it is, so 700 meters. Uh, and a lot of these other uh, projects, they have a percentage in. You can see from this, uh, just the type of deposits... Um, and the future of, of this, these explorations, I think are really good. Uh, they, what's great about the company is it's not only, you know, they have, they have assets spanning for across the whole spectrum. So the life cycle of a mine, this chart here, you can kind of see there's a big upside when you find there's a new speculation, you find a new target, uh, or a new mine, or, you know, you just continue to search your existing mines and you find more deposits. So they're really close in this phase for a couple of their projects. And they're also here, which is somewhat of a lower risk because they have a percentage, you know, pretty big percentage in a lot of projects that will be going forward as the uranium price rises. Here's another chart. Uh, you know, this, when you get into uh, this discovery phase, I said the stocks just go up in value so much. And the same thing over here, you know, when you're when you're closer to getting the mines going and the feasibility studies, you're kind of in this area for some of the other projects. So very, uh, very big upside. Uh, Bloomberg, they have a consensus short term. It's about 98 percent. They think it can go up. So we're around here right now. Uh, I, th I myself think it's a double with just the deal going through. I think uh, without the deal going through, it's it's easily going to be. 50% to possibly a double with just uranium spot price going up because the assets they already have, I mean, it's one of the best locations, you know, hundred million pounds will be 200 million. The company is literally going to double and it's just doubling the assets that they already have that, you know, in, that they're in because it's, they're in uh, 19 projects. So these, like I said, range from these grassroots stages through the development stages and you know, having tier one projects uh, as a junior, having access to those and not necessarily being in charge of having to get all of those going when you have Cameco and Denison and other companies going to be running those. It's very bullish to me. Uh, so some people are saying that they they're like, well, the JCU deal uh, might not go through. And because Denison had offered uh, double, triple, I think what what uh, UEX offered. But there's a deal. It was a binding agreement and these binding agreements, you know, it's an overseas company. It's in Japan and in Japan, your word is really everything. Honor is very big over there. Uh, it's a lot different from the West, but this is a very tiny deal for this company because the JCU, which is Japan, Canada, uranium company, they're pretty much a quarter owned by uh, Ord and... Itochu Corporation, Itochu, and then Mitsubishi Corporation. Now, each, each of these, I've done some research, specifically the companies themselves. So Mitsubishi, 12.8 trillion Japanese yen. So that would be equivalent to about 
117 billion USD revenue that they had. Uh, this was in 2021 already. So, um, Itochu, 10.36 trillion, which would be equivalent to 94 billion. And Mitsubishi Materials, that's still a 13.5 billion this year. So these companies, there's about 28 or 29, I think, shareholders uh, that will vote on this. The the rest of these 29 people, it's a private company, will vote on it. They're going to vote on it because the majority shareholders already said yes and approved the deal. You know, what's this? Is this a peanuts to them? Basically, uh, their older uh, mines that they had uh, pretty much have exhausted, you know, the company, JCU, uh, and or they they don't they're not really looking to continue their uranium exploration uh it, like i said the companies they've got a lot of bigger a lot bigger you know things to worry about than you know these to them small uranium sector that they kind of don't have as much uh skin in the game anymore because now these projects they're going to take a little bit more time and uh they're not completely producing or anything right now obviously so yeah like like i said this this deal it's going to go through and it's going to double the market cap of you know uex you can look here on the chart they have these grassroots these grassroots uh projects that we were talking about and these are these are really the big ones here that can make your uranium stock run exponentially because you know you find a big deposit which these deposits are literally by the biggest deposits in the entire world. So because we've been in a 10 year bear market and a lot of these deposits, uh, you know, there hasn't been as much exploration. There's such a big upside of finding, you know, new mines, new deposits on these properties. They have so many acres, you know, hundreds of kilometers they can search and they've got uh, just, very big potential to find a new deposit that could be as big as Arrow, you know, which is which is phenomenal. And I think the the stock's just trading at unbelievable prices right now. We're in a we're in a bear market or a bull market coming out of a bear market. So uh, the short term, they're looking to you know develop this Wheeler River project. Uh, they're growing the company's resources through you know discoveries of new deposits or hidden through their Hidden Bay, West Bearing, uh, Christie Lake projects. But they've they've got having the resources grow double is, that's why pretty much everyone, Haywood, uh, Red Cloud, they're all saying a double, 100% from here. And I, I agree, that's what I say, just very short term. I think this month, June into July, with spot prices rising, could easily, it should easily double. You know, other juniors have have done way bigger moves and they don't have half the resources. This is the best place in the world for uranium. Uh, it's now the most bullish stock, uranium stock I'm looking at. You know, John Borshoff, Rick Rule, hate them, love them, whatever you want to want to say. They both have been talking recently about how important it is to have future exploration, you know, for uranium, because a lot of these mines, a lot of these mines will be depleted. Um, a lot of these will, as you see, some of these are, some of these mines only have a short life, uh, you know, so they're going to need new mines coming in. Um, there's such a demand coming in such a supply crunch now because of, you know, the past year, what's happened that the market will really react positively to a company that not only has exploration upside, but also has near term production percentage that they don't have to necessarily go all in on. So the Wheeler River, you know, Denison owns 90%. So JCU, UEX will own 10% of that. Uh, that's 132 million pounds of U308 uh, indicated. So, you know, big upside. That's, you know, majority, majority of the stocks out there, the juniors, they even have a, a project close to that. You know, they're, they've already traded, say, 5 to 10x what they're what they're really probably worth um but because they have all these uh you know joint ventures with with some really big companies i see this as just one of the most bullish you know stocks out there that's right on the cusp of just exploding and i'm talking about you know uranium price really starts running 
uh, this could be over a dollar very quickly. You know, it's it's not your typical uranium junior. Uh, I want you to see the uh, the management here is very experienced. And uh, I initially bought the stock at 13 cents last year. I did my due diligence, but I was in a lot of uranium stocks. And at the time, this stock, there was no JCU deal on the table. Um, but if you look at their history, pretty much most of their directors here, uh, they're, they're on the ground directors, their CEO, exploration manager, they worked for Cameco for 14 years, okay? They were in charge of some of the biggest projects. Uh, Nathan as well worked at Cameco. Uh, they're geologists, uh, very smart guys. Um, they've actually found a cobalt discovery recently. It's the first of its kind. Uh, they say they pretty much know how to find these. Uh, they have a lot of, a lot of uh, spots on their properties that they're actually going to continue to look. Uh, this, is, this is just a, a bonus. You know, it's really a uranium only uh, they're concentrating on right now, but I, I really do like that part of the management. I like the fact that Cameco is still a big holder. And I like the fact that you're across the whole spectrum in this, in this stock. And it's, it's one of those stocks. I don't think that a lot of people have looked at a lot of people don't understand the value yet, which is great because that's, that's what I do. I look, I look to observe, uh, at what's happening in the market and I try to make a rational bet. That's how I've done so well. So what I'm, what I'm observing here, as you can see, is that it's the most undervalued uranium junior out there. This, this stock is actually trading, uh, I think it's 2.4 times the shares it had in 2007. They only had two projects in 2007 and they haven't split. So they only, like I said, only 2.4 times the shares, uh, with 185 million shares, uh, then they now have 454 million shares. So if it hit nine fifteen, nine dollars and 15 cents with, uh, with only two projects in 2007 with the uranium bull market coming and, uh, seeing $200 uranium possibly in the future, uh, this stock could well over be $5 or more very quickly with the uranium spot running, I think. So, you know, that's a big upside here. Um, I, I've been trying to find a stock that you could get in that could be the next Paladin. And I thought I had found a few of those in the past year, but I don't think those have as big upside as what UEX will have. Now, this is a long-term play for me. Uh, Short-term, I think it's it's great in the next few months. Um, with the deal going through with or without, it's still a phenomenal company. Uh, and I think either way, it helps them in both ways. If they, if they don't get the deal, they can go another route that's still going to give them just as much uh, value. And if they do get it, it's just going to be this juggernaut that is going to be reevaluated and probably three times what it's worth right now with spot starting to move in July. So uh, take it with what it's worth. If you're a chart guy, you can check the chart out. It's looking phenomenal to me. And, uh, you know, word is that this deal is guaranteed to go through. So we'll see. We've got, we've got that. We've also got drilling, uh, upcoming catalyst drilling at the West bear and Hidden Bay, which is ongoing, and summer drilling at the Christie Lake and possibly she Creek, uh, Shea Creek. And that's, you know, that's more catalyst for the company. They're going to have news putting out. Um, I will be uh, speaking with the CEO. I'll be asking him my uh, hard questions that I always ask his CEOs. Um, I am heavily invested in the stock. Um, and a lot of other people are starting to see what it's worth. So expect this stock to not be this cheap for long. So if you like this video, hit the uh, like and subscribe button below if you want more. And uh, we'll see how this is going to go. Let me know in the comments below. Do you think this is a good uranium stock? If not, tell me what uranium stock you're in. And uh, maybe I'll cover it in the future.